All right, time now for our AT&T Fiber Fast recap. Get hyper fast internet with AT&T Fiber as the Warriors pick up their third road win of the season, their first on the six game, nine day road trip. They beat up on the Raptors by 16. They led this game by as many as 24 points. Five players in double figures, including Jordan Poole with a career high 43 points. Clay with 17 and seven. And it's the 17th game this season where the Warriors have had at least five players in double figures. They slow down Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. And they lead the six with the win. They have a chance to improve back to 500 Tuesday night against the New York Knicks. So all around a solid night. And look, when you look at the bench, you look at the contributors. How about your Michael Green? Look, Steve Kerr wants this guy to be the small ball five coming off that bench alongside Dante DiVincenzo, who's been starting in place of Stephen Curry. But a solid, solid night for Jermichael Green. Five of seven from the floor. 15.7 rebounds at Fezzi. You've been talking about how nasty this guy is back yes. to your playing days at Vanderbilt when you went against him when he was at Alabama. A good sign for Jermichael Green playing tough for the Warriors off the bench. He's a guy who's, who's been trying to get his rhythm. When he came to the Warriors, he was known as a 3 and D guy, a veteran in this league, very tough in the paint, and now you see him starting to get his rhythm, starting to get the chemistry with the guys, understanding that you can play defense with this guy, and he can switch out to the guards, he can play with the big man in the paint, rebound with the best of them. He's such a luxury to have coming off the bench, and you see him out there also being a lob threat for this team as well. So a guy that can hit big shots for this team, veteran, like you said, the veterans for this team are coming out and showing that they they, they really can run this ship and, and keep it afloat until Steph Curry comes back. Yeah, I think Jermichael Green's a really good fit here. Uh, when this team plays well, he fits in perfectly. Uh, his three-point shot looks like it's coming around. Right? He had a, he was a little banged up last year physically. Um, but tonight, I think a key was the Raptors, and we talked about this pregame, they shoot 42%. The Warriors uh, figured out the rebounding in the second half. That puts them in the open floor much mm -hmm. more. They're not looking at a set defense with those long athletic defenders. So as they're in transition, you're throwing the ball ahead. You get that defense on their heels. A lot better shot quality. Jermichael Green caught a few lobs from Draymond. He knocked down a th few three-point shots. All uh, plays uh, created by his teammates, which is what you want which what you want from your small ball five. How about Dante DiVincenzo? He's having a heck of a road trip so far for the Golden State Warriors four games in. Tonight he gets to start again in place of Stephen Curry and Andrew Wiggins. Look, the stat line is not going to look pretty, right, with the five points, two of five, but the six assists, two steals. And I thought defensively he went at yes. Fred Van Vliet, Bully. That's he was in his grill. Dante DiVincenzo brings all the intangibles every night, playing hard, individual defense, rebounding, 50-50 balls. Depending on the flow of the offense, that, that'll be there. But uh, his effort, his effectiveness uh, with his hustle plays does not vary. And tonight was a great example of that. You said, Bonte, did a great job on Fred Van Vliet, shutting him down, uh, which was key tonight. I thought their team defense was really key to tonight's victory. Bonte. Dante DiVincenzo and what he does on this team, you cannot quantify it by looking at a box score. With the defense, the 50-50 balls, those things are the things that when we talked earlier in the pregame about uh, role players on a team and them being the X factors to any team that goes on to win a championship, Dante is a champion. He won with the Milwaukee Bucks. He understands what it takes to win games. And so seeing him get into his rhythm, I talked about Jermichael Green and his defense. Mm. But there was, a, there was a play in the third quarter, I think the end of the third quarter, where Jermichael switches out with Dante. And they get a, 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 a shot clock violation out there on the perimeter. This is what you want from your bench. Both of them are playing great defense right now. And with that, if the bench plays defense like that, you can extend those leads that we were talking about in those non-starter minutes. And, and for this team, like I said, this time right now with this team is really crucial for what they're trying to do later in the season. Steve Kerr talked pregame about being a role player mm -hmm. and how the opportunities are not always consistent, whether it be field goal attempts or minutes. What has to be consistent is your defensive effort, yep. your, your attention to detail. Uh, and when the opportunities do come, you got to be ready to knock them down. Tonight, Draymond did it. Jermichael Green did it. In Philly, uh, Devon Chilla started with 15 he, first quarter points. He had yeah. five threes in the first quarter. So when they're there, he's ready to do it. But he brings the other intangibles every single night. All right, good night for the Golden State Warriors picking up their third row win of the season. You know Steve Kerr's happy. He's talking right now in Toronto, presented by BMW. Steve, was that the most complete game you've ever seen Jordan play? Uh, he's played a lot of great games for us. So um, it's, if, you know, if it's not the best, it's definitely one of the uh, few uh, best because he was, he was great at, at both ends. You know, his defense was excellent. I thought he was patient offensively. Um, 
uh, got us into uh, our offense well. And, um, he just set the tone. He just carried us. Is Draymond Green three consecutive threes exactly how you throw at the start of this game? You know it. You know it. Uh, yeah, that was a great start. You know, Draymond um, was feeling good uh, right from the beginning of the game. And I don't think I've ever seen – I think he had 13 points in the first five or six minutes of the game. By the first time out, he had 13, which was kind of crazy. But Draymond's amazing. Um, such a competitor, such an incredible defensive player. And uh, those shots were huge for us. They just helped us get off to a really good start. Was there like a mini heart attack when you let the third one fly? Oh, no. He was hot at that point. You got to let it fly. You got, I don't need to remind you of your road record or anything like that, but um, I think it was, this was five straight road losses heading into today. Did today feel like a must win kind of just because of Steph not Andrew still being out? Everything else to check out. I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like the term "must win" until you have three losses in a playoff series. You know, then that's that's what a must win is. Um, uh, where we are right now, we're, uh, we're we're climbing out of an early season um, struggle. Uh, we've gotten better over recent weeks. We just haven't been able to uh, capitalize on the road. But uh, tonight was a great effort and. Um, I, as I said before the game, I, I really like this team. I think we have a chance to be really good. Uh, and the fact that we're having to climb out of the hole and f find ourselves, figure out our identity, guys are having to find roles, it's, that's actually really um, rewarding. Um, sometimes these are the best kind of seasons where you, you got to figure it out collectively. And the guys have, have such a great attitude, such a great approach, and they're fighting, and um, it's nice to be rewarded. Was there anything that jumped out to you? Obviously, you guys shot the three ball incredibly well in this game, but like in terms of the slips that you guys got and all the stuff going to the rim, was there anything in particular where you thought just like pacing or like something that you guys were doing that allowed you to hammer that stuff and like just completely unwind that rapidly? No, I mean, I think, you know, when anytime you're making threes like we were tonight, um, it opens up the game and, you know, the defense has to come out. Um, you know, we had a slip, I think, for Jamichael. You know, as um, I think Coloco jumped out to guard Clay on a pin and pin in in the corner, and so you know, guys make a few threes, it changes the game, and and the defense has to respond to that, and they're more vulnerable to to slips and back cuts and stuff. Steve, go ahead. Did that shift in the defense kind of benefit Jamal Green the most? I'm sorry. Did that kind of shift in the defense, them having to extend out, you know, further kind of, you know. Help Jamichael Green the most. Yeah, you know, uh, Toronto switches everything. And um, so one of the thoughts going into the game was that Jamichael could, could play a big role because of his ability to stretch the floor uh, as a big. You know, starting Draymond and, and Loon together, um, you know, you don't have <clears throat> ideal spacing. Um, so for Draymond to go out there and knock down three threes and then Jamichael to come in, make a couple more. Um, you know, getting five threes from our big guys was a game changer. Steve, uh, you mentioned earlier how your own team is trying to kind of figure out their roles and identity and all that, and the Raptors are kind of in a similar spot. You know, they're on a five-game yeah. losing streak. Uh, sort of, what do you think is the key to being able to get out of those kind of funks? Uh, you know, is it uh, just looking big picture? Is it, you know, changing the over practice? How have you kind of found the ways to get out of I, th I think it's just you know, maintaining your uh, poise and, and equilibrium in a uh, in a time where um, there's a lot of noise and, um, you, you know, especially in, in the modern life that we live, um, if, you know, in the NBA, if you're struggling, you're, you're going to take a lot of criticism and a lot of heat. What I like about our team, one of the reasons I really like this group is that we've, we've taken plenty of heat, uh, but our approach and our attitude has been great. Yesterday's practice was fantastic. Had a great film session. The guys were upbeat. We practiced. The guys are laughing. Uh, they're they're enjoying the process. They're enjoying the work. Enjoying each other. Um, I think that's what it takes. Is you know you, your culture um, has to sustain um, when you're when you're losing. And as long as you have that, uh, that means the guys have the right approach, and things tend to go your way. And go ahead. I'll go. I, you spoke a lot in 2019 about how much you like playing here in the crowd, and you know it was a great place to play. And today, uh, you know the crowd was a little bit quieter because obviously you know, there was a, there was a 
big lead on your half. Uh, how tough is it to play here when, when there's that big crowd? And do you notice a difference as a coach of the, the crowd noise or anything like that? Or are you, you know, locked in? Locked? Well, I think the, the, the way uh, that I always feel coming in here is that people love basketball. Um, and you, you, there's a buzz in the crowd before the game even starts. And uh, there's a handful of arenas that really stand out in that regard where you can feel the, you know, the juice, the energy before the game from the fans. And on top of that, it's, just, it's a great building. It's a great venue. Um, so it's, I always just enjoy uh, coming in here and experiencing uh, the game and the crowd. Um, uh, yeah, my, 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 my question is not uh, uh, related with, uh, with the game, if you allow me. Um, yeah, Clay Thompson said uh, two months ago that, uh, that the Barça Guardiola was uh, inspiring uh, for, for, for you, for your success in the last years. Um, my, my question is, uh, well, the, the team today is uh, in reconstruction, Barça, but my, my question is if uh, uh, it keeps, uh, keeps being uh, inspiring for, for, for you, uh, the, the Barça. Is keep, is keep things what? No, if, uh, if uh, the, the game style of Barca keep, uh, keeps being inspiring for, for your uh, game style, for, for your philosophy. I'm sorry. I... FC Barcelona. Are they inspiring yeah. to your philosophy? Oh, oh, FC Barcelona, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, years ago I showed, um, I showed our guys some, um, some, some highlights of Tiki Taka football and uh, the importance of possession and, and uh, making simple plays, but controlling the ball. And, uh, and so I, I just think there are a lot of parallels to, uh, between uh, you know, football and basketball, soccer for Americans. Uh, but um, it, it's, I think as a coach, it's, fun, it's kind of fun to give guys uh, metaphors and you know, highlights of other sports. and. They tend to listen more. They, you know, they get um, they get their fill of basketball every day. So, I think the guys liked it. Clay brought it up. You said, uh, you know, early in the season, and uh, it's the way that we believe in in playing. You know, we had 31 assists tonight. And the ball moves. Uh, when the ball moves, uh, everyone's engaged. Everyone plays better defense. They they run harder, and so that's my uh, it's my feeling. Steve, you talk for the game. All right, I'll Steve Curry. We check out this tweet from StatMuse. Pool without Steph Curry this season is averaging nearly 31 points per game, five and a half, five and a half assists, and over three point uh, three makes from the three point line in a game. He's a bucket getter, no doubt about it. So you know what, Fezzi and Molly? Who needs Steph? Wow. 30 points. That escalated quickly. Hey, 30 point, 31 uh, points. I mean, what if you don't look like lately out yeah, here, huh? right? <laughs> No, you know, I, I, like I said before, it's such a luxury to have somebody like Jordan Poole on this team because he is, because quickness is such a, it's, it's a skill, it's a, it's a trait that we can use to our advantage at any point. He was getting to the paint, getting to the rim, mm -hmm. and this is, it's also his learning process this year, right? Because he's trying to learn how to get to the paint and take the shots that the team needs in the flow of the offense. Understanding when and when, when to create for other people and when to create for himself. And so with a skill like that, he knows that he can get a shot at any point, but it was great to see him creating for other people tonight. Yeah, I think what Steve Kerr was just saying, I think is really appropriate. You look at this team uh, still trying to find itself, mm -hmm. but they have so many weapons. Um, to me, this, this, you know, next, till the end of the season, till April, it's really about navigating this journey to that point mm -hmm. because you get into a playoff series, and you've got a Jordan Poole that you could start when you want. You can you know, change that lineup uh, and the dynamic where you can have Steph dominate the ball, but then the next game flip it and have Draymond play point forward. There's not a team in the league that can do that. So to me, navigate from now to the playoffs, and when you get in the playoffs, there's not a team in the league that wants to see this team. They don't need home court, right? I don't no, think they do. No, no, no. Still one of the first two gays, Fezzi? Wherever they go, Protected. it's a home court. 